so let's jump in to our first PC and that's going to be our $500 option now $500 gaming PC is quite hard to come by but I found as close to that price point as possible which was this HP Pavilion gaming desktop for $569.99 and this thing comes with a Ryzen 3 uh, 5300G so a four core eight thread APU but you also in this PC do get a dedicated graphics card in the GTX 1650 Super. So it is uh, a couple years old in terms of a graphics card, but you are getting a dedicated GPU for 570 bucks, which is pretty great. I mean, NDXT is now selling a APU build on their BLD website with, I believe, a 5600G for right around $800. So... 570 with a dedicated 1650 super not bad at all i mean it'd be very difficult to build a pc with a 1650 super which are selling secondhand now for like 300 dollars on ebay for this price um you are also getting eight gigs of uh ddr4 memory at 3200 uh speed and it is a 2x4 gig configuration so you do get all the benefits of dual channel ram so you do get two sticks um which just makes the overall cpu performance a little bit better than if you were to get one stick of eight gigabytes and it also comes with a 256 gig ssd so you will probably need to figure out a way to store a bunch of games on your hp pavilion most likely buying a one or two terabyte hard drive in order to throw in there for maybe 30 40 50 dollars so with a Ryzen 3 5300G and a GTX 1650 Super, you're going to look at really good entry-level gaming performance, something that's really going to last you for a year, two years, maybe even more down the line. The real limitation with the HP Pavilion Gaming Desktop is upgradability and cooling. So cooling performance, not going to be great. I did buy one of these systems previously with like a 3100X and a RX 5500. So this is definitely an upgrade over that model. Um, but the cooling performance wasn't great in that version. You're probably going to see similar performance with this one. And the upgradability in terms of the power supply, motherboard, both are proprietary. So it's going to be really difficult, if not impossible, to upgrade those down the line, which then makes upgrading a graphics card down the line hard as well. You'd probably max out at a 1660 Super, maybe get away with a 2060 or a 3060 upgrade down the line. But this thing is really, like I said, it'll really last you well. At 1080p, 60fps, 120fps, and, and some FPS games. Um, but overall, you'll probably keep it for a year or two. Sell it on eBay secondhand to a newer gamer that's really just trying to get started with an entry-level system. And then upgrade uh, or buy a new system or build a new system uh, for yourself maybe down the line. But overall, for $570, this is a really good PC for the money. But let's move on to our $1,000 option. And as you can see, I did buy this thing last November, which was the PC we did for the giveaway. And this thing still stands up as the best PC for $1,000. Uh, it's the CyberPower PC Gamer Extreme with an i5-11400F, 8 gigs of DDR4, and an RTX 2060. You also get a 500 gig NVMe and Windows 11 Home. So I did a full review on this system. You can definitely check that out. I'll have it linked right up here but overall the system was great the only limitations really were single channel memory which i was able to upgrade and the cooling performance on just the base intel cooler lacked extremely when it came to cpu cooling performance so we did upgrade that as well to a hyper 212 so for around 100 bucks if you were to you know wanted to just get a little bit extra performance out of the system you could upgrade the cpu cooler and upgrade the ram and that would do you really really well um, and it also comes with a keyboard and mouse, so you don't have to also spend a little bit extra on peripherals. You can maybe put that money that you're going to spend on a keyboard and a mouse towards upgrading your system down the line. Maybe it's a couple months, maybe it's a little bit longer, but you can definitely get a little bit more performance out of the system if you do want to. Uh, I'm sure down the line as GPU prices start to come down, CPUs become more widely available, You'll be able to get a $1,000 system with an RTX 3060, probably no problem. But right now, those systems are going for $1,300, uh, if not $1,400. So this is definitely the best option at $1,000. And talking about a 3060, 3060 Ti, 
let's jump over to our $1,500 system. And for that, we do have the NZXT Starter Pro PC. So NZXT BLD, a little while ago, probably six, six months ago, upped a lot of their prices on their systems, but they've started to trend it back down, especially when it comes to the Starter Series. And these things are really good deals once again, especially the Starter Pro PC at $1,450. You're getting an RTX 3060 Ti and an i5 10400F. Now, the 10400F is a little bit disappointing. You can always upgrade that to like a 10700 or even a 10900 if you really wanted to boost that performance even further. And being that it's a slightly older generation of CPU, you should be able to upgrade to one of those options for a little bit less money, which is also really, really nice. Uh, it does come with... Uh, dual channel, 16 gigabyte uh, memory at 3000 megahertz, which is great. Uh, you also get a one terabyte NVMe SSD. Uh, it is PCI Express 3.0, but you'll still not really notice a difference with the crazy speeds of NVMe's these days. One limitation of this system is definitely the power supply. So it's a 500 watt bronze power supply. You can always upgrade it. So like the beauty of this NZXT system, similar to the Cyber Power PC system, is all of the, the entire build is pretty much off the shelf components. You have your H510 case, uh, a B560 motherboard, graphic card, everything from cooler to motherboard to case is all going to be pretty much off the shelf components. So you can always upgrade those things down the line, whereas you can't really do that with the HP Pavilion system. But overall, you could spend a hundred bucks, maybe a little bit more, upgrade that to a 750 watt power supply, and then you're off to the races with a CPU upgrade or a GPU upgrade really whenever you want to down the line. The system overall is great. For 1500 bucks, this is definitely the best option that's out there on the market. But overall, NZXT BLD has really put together some really compelling options when it comes to pre-built, and we are actually gonna stick with them for our $2,000 build. So for our $2,000 system, we're going with the Streaming Plus PC. Now, the Streaming Plus PC at $1,999 is really the best option at this price point, mainly due to just the core components of the CPU and the GPU. Now, the CPU, we're getting a Ryzen 7 5800X, 8 cores, 16 threads. That CPU will last you another 4 or 5 years uh, without a problem, probably even longer than that. And we're also getting a GeForce RTX 3070 Ti, which is, I mean, the Ti editions of the RTX 3000 series cards uh, were a little disappointing, to say the least, mainly due to just the, the small bumps in performance here and there compared to just the regular RTX 3000 series counterparts. So like the, the RTX 3080 Ti, it's definitely a step up over the RTX 3080, but performance-wise, it's it's like 8% and the price point is extremely more expensive. But it's really hard to get a 3070 Ti right now for like less than $900. So to be able to get a $2,000 system where half that money is going to the graphics card and still be able to get a Ryzen 7 5800X, uh, uh, AIO liquid cooler to cool the CPU, this is a really good deal for that $2,000 price point. And the majority of other systems at this price point were coming with just a regular RTX 3070 and still an 8-core 16-thread CPU. So there's some other options out there. This was just the one that really stood out to me as the best deal just based on pure components and, and pure specs uh, and just, again, upgradability of these NZXT systems. It's all going to be off-the-shelf parts. You're getting the H510 case, which is an awesome case. There's, of course, some some cooling limitations with the 510. You only really have the, the perforations on the one side of the case to bring in air through the front. But overall, I had one of these cases for like well over a year and the thing did really, really well. I had no problems with it at all. Um, but let's just continue with the specs. So you do get, uh, again, 16 gigs of 2x8 sticks at 3000 megahertz for the RAM, one terabyte NVMe SSD, a B550 motherboard, a 750 watt power supply. So you can upgrade to a 3080 or even higher if you really wanted to down the line. You do get the Kraken M22, so it's a 120 millimeter AIO. Again, you could upgrade the cooling down the line, but for a 5800X, you could probably get away with this thing, uh, no problem, and see really good CPU temps as well. And one of the other things about these NZXT systems is going to be your warranty. Two years on parts and labor, which is definitely like above industry standard. I would say industry standard for the most part is right around a year. You can definitely find other manufacturers that do do two years 
but NZXT is right up there with the two-year parts and labor warranty, which is something you can't get if you build your own system. I mean, you can, you'll get it on the individual components. You can always do RMAs and things like that. But the benefit of having, you know, being able to send your system in and get it get it fixed and get it sent back, uh, it's just a little bit easier with a pre-built than it is if you're doing all of that on your own. Hopefully soon, when prices do eventually come down, you'll be able to get a $2,000 PC with an RTX 3080. But right now, those PCs are going for closer to $2,300, $2,400. So for $2,000, this is definitely going to be my choice um, without a doubt. I mean, you get really, really good specs, easy upgrades down the line. You're getting awesome components. So there's really nothing you would really touch with this thing. I mean, you shouldn't really expect to touch anything with a $2,000 system, but this thing's going to last you a really, really long time and definitely be able to game at high refresh rate, 1440p, probably 4K, um, if you did want to spend some extra money on some 4K monitors. But overall, from $500 to $2,000, there's still some really good pre-built options out there on the market and prices are definitely starting to trend downward and you're definitely starting to see better components at each one of these price points than we were let's say six months ago or even a year ago so overall i'm pretty psyched to see what the next six months or a year holds for these systems but at the start of 2022 these are the best deals for pcs at 500 dollars a thousand dollars 1500 and two thousand so if you're looking at any of those price points definitely take a look at these options but if you're looking at a different PC at one of these price points, definitely give me an idea of what those PCs are down in the comments below. I'm super interested to see what you guys are buying and what you guys are really looking at in a pre-built PC. Uh, so again, definitely leave those in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, get subscribed to the channel so you can stay up to date on all my latest videos. And I will see you guys in the next one.